it's time for the Horizon Zero Dawn review for the PS4. I remember during the lead-up hype of Breath of the Wild in 2017, there was also this game which released just a few days before. I always thought it looked really interesting, but I didn't have a PS4 then. When I got my PS4 a few years later, this was one of the first games I bought for it. Was it justified in being one of the first for my new console? Let's find out. Just a little side note, even though I have the Frozen Wilds DLC, I will not be taking it into account for this review, as I only want to focus on the base game. Without spoiling major details, the story centers around a girl named Aloy, an outcast of her native tribe, the Nora. During a tribal contest where if Aloy wins, she'll be able to learn more about her mysterious past, the event is invaded by a group of killers from a different tribe. Aloy narrowly escapes, and after awakening, sets off to track down the leader of the attack who is also connected to her past. This is an open world RPG where you'd initially think the time setting takes place in a primitive world, but that's not the case. It's actually a post-apocalyptic future that specifically takes place in the western half of the United States. Somehow, modern civilization was destroyed and the remnants of the cities and, from Aloy's point of view, ancient tech can be found throughout. The main example are large, advanced machines that look like different types of animals. Don't get too close, as these are some of the main threats of the game. When Aloy was a child, she accidentally fell into an ancient ruin. As she was looking for a way out, she came across a focus, a unique device that lets her see details of objects in her close surroundings. The focus is a very important tool to your success. When activated, it can act like a second sight, allowing you to view biological and mechanical creatures near you even if they're behind walls or structures. You can tag them with your focus so an arrow will constantly be over them when you're not using your focus. This is a great way to hunt animals, and this shouldn't be overlooked as their skins and bones are needed to upgrade your carrying capacity. Your focus can also let you know of a machine's walking pattern and highlight their weakness, which are different parts and components that can be removed if correctly shot at. Some parts are elementally weak, so having the right type of ammunition can be the key to a quick takedown. Aloy also has a spear for melee combat, which has a place and time to use, such as quickly knocking components off or going in for the killing strike, but her versatile ranged weapons are overall much more effective. Exploring the world and finding new types of machines is fun, and the potential drops you receive from a down machine can be valuable in trading with merchants, or you can find certain components to craft into your weapons and armor for bonus stats. Taking out machines can be difficult, and you'll not always want to start a battle with arrows flying. Crouching in tall red bushes can conceal Aloy, even if an enemy is looking right at them, which... Uh, I know it's just a game, but come on. Some machines have projectile weaponry attached to them which can make them even more dangerous, but if you're able to knock these weapons off, you can pick them up and use them to your advantage. It's so much fun taking down giant mechanical beasts with their own weapons, and can quickly turn the tide in your favor. As you play through, you'll come across cauldrons, massive mechanical caves deep within the side of mountains. If you can clear a cauldron, you'll be granted the ability to override certain machines, turning them from hostile to allies. In doing so, they'll fight alongside you, and in some cases, it's just easier and faster for them to take out the machines for you. Be careful though, as they only stay overridden for a short time, and they can also turn on you if you damage them enough, accidentally or not. You can mount and ride some machines, and attacking with them while you're mounted is another way to get things done. Machines aren't the only threat, as bandits and other nefarious tribesmen will get in your way. They're usually not as difficult to deal with as a machine is, but some can pack a punch if you're not careful. Bandit camps are a nice side objective to take on, and you can either play as a stealthy shadow or go berserk and take them down as quickly as possible. Another type of optional area were the hunting trials. Here, you're given a specific task in relation to taking out machines in a given time limit. Some of them are quite easy, but others will really test your skills, like this one, where I have to override two Ravager machines and use them to help me take out a Thunderjaw, which is basically a mechanical T-Rex, in under three minutes. In addition to the many quests available, any kill you make will net you experience. Aloy's skill tree is a bit lacking in my opinion. Sure, you can unlock different skills to fit your playstyle, but because of the generous amount of experience you can quickly gain, I found myself being overleveled in most new areas I came across, or new quests becoming available that showcase a certain level you should be before taking it on. This might sound fun as you have the constant advantage, but the downside is the game can become too easy. It's not difficult to unlock the primary skills you want, and after you do so, the chance at the other skills advancing your gameplay experience is not guaranteed. I didn't really care to unlock the skills that help with overriding and repairing machines, but they were basically the only ones left before I got through half of the main game. The story is top-notch, with great voice acting throughout. 
Sometimes moral speech checks would come up where choosing one would change Aloy's answer, and to a limited extent could change specific quest elements. The only problem I had were sometimes the NPCs wouldn't have great matching facial expressions with what they were saying. Out of my way, outcast. All of you! I want that gate back up immediately! The music is beautifully atmospheric and fits each section of the game. One of my favorites is when you're facing a Thunderjaw. The graphics are amazing. When I first started, I remember saying how this was the best looking game I had ever played, and as of this review, it is still one of the best. There's really nothing bad I have to say about this category, other than the few instances of graphical glitches I came across. Overall, the game is simply beautiful. The controls and camera are pretty much perfect. If I had to be picky on something, I guess it would be when you open up your weapons wheel to choose a weapon or quickly craft more ammo, the game doesn't pause and instead slows to a crawl. I could see how this could become frustrating if you're in a jam, but any annoyance perceived is negligible. One thing I didn't care for is that Aloy can only climb up walls and structures with preset climbable objects. Perhaps I'm spoiled with Breath of the Wild's climbing freedom, but there were instances where I wish she could just climb almost anything so I could get to my destination quicker, but no, I have to be on the lookout for specific climbable objects. Another annoyance was that there's no way to change the game's clock from day to night, or vice versa. As far as I know, there aren't any locked quests or areas I can only access during specific times, but I enjoyed the game more during the day and would have liked the option to change it at will. Fast traveling doesn't seem to work, so the only way to change it is to wait. I found that traveling from one point to another on foot is a good way to bypass the time, and it's kind of fun running from one side of the map to the other. Thank goodness Aloy has unlimited stamina. Link, take notes. Horizon Zero Dawn is a fantastic game, one that excels in presentation and player engagement. Fighting off behemoth hostile machines can be exhilarating, and figuring out the best way to take them down with the use of your diverse arsenal is fun. I wish Aloy's skill tree had more options, and it would have been nice if Aloy could climb more than just the preset climbable areas. I didn't like that Aloy's spear wasn't customizable with coil modifications, unless you purchase the DLC, and there came a point when exploring everything wasn't particularly fun anymore as the majority of enemy encounters wasn't new. Still, the story will keep you going and the large game world provides a fun, challenging experience. This game gets a 4.5 out of 5 with the title of Epic.